Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. In this video we are introducing probability. We're going to take a look at what probability actually is and then look at a few examples to highlight how we measure it. So let's have a look at the definition of probability. A good word I think to describe probability is the word likelihood. When we are looking at the probability of something happening, we are asking ourselves how likely is it that that is going to happen. Now, some things are not necessarily measurable, but they can still have a probability. We use a probability line, such as the one we see here, to mark out the likelihood of something happening. So, for instance, if somebody was to ask how likely it is that it would snow in the month of August in England, you might say that is very, very unlikely. Maybe it is not impossible, but very, very unlikely. Therefore, the likelihood would be close to zero. Therefore, zero is something that is impossible. It is not going to happen, and you have to be very definite about that. Zero is the impossible. Snowing in August is very, very unlikely, but it is not impossible. So you may mark it somewhere on the line very close to zero down this end here. If you consider an action such as tossing a coin, then we have two possible outcomes. It can either be heads or tails we have an even chance of either of those happening. So if we say, what is the likelihood of it being heads? We would say, well, half and half. The likelihood, therefore, is 0 0.5. A half chance of being a head, a half chance of being a tail. Now, if you were to be asked the question, what is the chance of the sun coming up tomorrow morning? Then you may say, well, it definitely will. The likelihood, therefore, is one. So here we have our range of numbers. Something that is totally impossible is zero. Something that is most definitely going to happen is one. And everything else is somewhere in between. Now, some of the things I've just talked about, snowing in August, for instance, is not necessarily quantifiable. You cannot put a number to it. But with many things, such as the tossing of a coin, you can actually work out a mathematical probability. It's also interesting with probability that there are two ways you can actually write probability. As we have done here, tossing a coin is a 0 0.5 chance, a half chance of it being one side or the other. We can also write that as a fraction. And in fact, sometimes using a fraction to describe probability is the most clear way forward. Let's say, for instance, you decided to roll a dice. Now, we know that a dice has six sides with a different number on each side. Therefore, the chances of rolling any particular number is one chance out of six. Let's say you are looking to roll a one. Well, the one only appears on one side of the dice. Therefore, you have one chance out of six of getting the number that you want. So as a fraction, we can write it one sixth. Writing as a decimal, not quite so simple. So fractions can be the easiest way forward. And of course, one sixth will be quite low on our line here because it is less than half chance that you would get the particular number that you're looking for. The words unlikely and likely are applied to probability. So anything that is less than half chance is unlikely, and anything that is higher than half chance, we say it is likely. So the closer to one, the more likely, the closer to zero, the less likely it is that something's going to happen. Sometimes we see probability written as a formula, although the wording may seem a little heavy. The probability of something happening is said to be the number of favourable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. Let's have a look at this more closely. Here we have a bag, and in the bag there are coloured counters. Some of them red, some of them blue. 
what we're going to have a look at is the probability of putting your hand in the bag and pulling out a blue counter. Let's first have a look at the bottom part of this formula, the number of possible outcomes. Well, that simply means that when you put your hand in the bag, you could pick any one of those counters. So if we total up the number, there are 10 counters in the bag. So the number of possible outcomes is that you could pull any one of those counters. We're looking for a blue counter, so that would be a favourable outcome. We look at how many there are, one, two, three, four. So there are four opportunities for you to draw out a blue counter. Therefore, the probability is four out of 10. On the other hand, if we are looking for the probability of drawing out a red counter, the same number of counters are in that bag, 10, but this time there are six red counters. So you have six possible chances of bringing out a red counter. Therefore, the probability is six out of 10. There are more red counters, so therefore it is a higher probability. Staying with the counters in the bag for just a moment longer, I've rewritten the original probabilities that we had. What is worth noticing is that if we take those two probabilities, the 6 out of 10 and the 4 out of 10, and add them together, we get 1. And that is because when you put your hand in the bag, you are definitely going to draw out a counter of one colour or another. You will get a red or a blue. There are no other colours in there, so it is definite the probability is one. And in a situation like this, if you do add all the probabilities together, all the possible outcomes, you will always get one. If we look at this in terms of rolling a dice, the probability of rolling the number one is one in six, one side out of six. But also the probability of rolling a two is one in six and a three, one in six. And so we go along because the probability of rolling any given number is exactly the same. And of course here we have six sixths. So add them all together and we get one. If you roll that dice, you are going to get one or other of the numbers that is a definite. And to finish, I just want to have a look at a couple of types of question which really call for straightforward thinking when you're looking at the answer. The first of these, what is the probability that a newborn baby will be a boy or a girl? Now you have to look at the wording very carefully here because it says, what is the probability that it will be a boy or a girl? And the answer to this question is one because that baby will be a boy or a girl. The question is giving both options as part of the answer. If the question had said, what's the probability a baby will be a boy? Well, then you've got a half, one out of two. It can be a boy or a girl. So the chances of it being boy is a half, but the chances of it being either a boy or a girl is one. And then the second one, which may seem a little more obvious, what is the likelihood that you will throw an eight when rolling a single dice? Well, a dice does not have an eight. Therefore, there is no chance that you will roll an eight. Therefore, the probability is zero. I have seen many times the answer very unlikely given for this scenario. Please be absolutely clear with your definition. If it's impossible, it is a zero probability. And hopefully that's given you a start into understanding the world of probability. I will be taking it further in other videos, so please do subscribe to my channel. And if you hit the notifications button, you'll get to hear of any new videos that I bring out. Thank you.